Okay guys, it is now the best video of them all, the X lookup video. So you've done V lookup, you've done H lookup, and now we're doing X lookup. X lookup is relatively new. It's only available in Microsoft 365. So if you've got Microsoft 365, a license for that, so you probably will have it if you're with a school that has Microsoft, or if you've purchased it at home, then you can use X lookup. In Microsoft 365, X lookup only works in Microsoft 365. Okay, so it won't work in Office 2016. It won't work in Office 2019. And who knows? Maybe it will work in the next one. I don't know. However, it's in our curriculum, so we're going to learn it. And let me tell you guys, once you start using this function, you won't go back to HLOOKUP or VLOOKUP ever again or index match. Trust me. Okay. So VLOOKUP was vertical lookup. Okay. And it had to start from the left. A VLOOKUP function can only read from left to right. Left to right. I don't know what it looks like in your camera. Anyway. Whereas an H lookup, okay, can only go from top to bottom. Okay, so we have those limitations on V lookup and H lookup. So vertical lookup starts on the left, looks at what's in the left, and then finds it on the right. You couldn't go the other way around. Okay, H lookup was the same with up and down. Now with X lookup, we're kind of freed up a heck of a lot. There's actually quite a bit you can do, and I'm going to show you what it is you can do with X lookup. X lookup can look up, down, left, and right, and find something specific that you're looking for. If it can't find it, you can also tell it what to do if it can't find it, and you can tell it where to look up, down, left, or right to go from top to bottom or from bottom to top. So it's actually incredibly powerful and super easy to use. I'm going to prove it to you, okay? Let's have a look at what I've written here in terms of the notes. So let's see, X lookup. In row number three, okay, that is what the XLOOKUP function is made up of, all the arguments. So there are three required arguments, and then there are three com uh, compulsory, no, 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 uh, non-compulsory, optional. That's the word I was looking for. So three mandatory arguments, okay, and three optional arguments. What are they? First of all, what does the XLOOKUP function do? The XLOOKUP function searches a range or an array and then returns the item corresponding to the first match it finds. If no match exists, then XLOOKUP can return the closest approximate match. So if it doesn't find something, it'll find the next best thing. Okay, that's pretty much what it's saying in a nutshell. So just think about HLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, put together, you got XLOOKUP. Okay, and you can go either way. Watch this, have a look. The arguments that the XLOOKUP function needs to work, we have the first thing is the lookup value, which in other words is, what am I looking for? I've got to stop moving my mouse, I'm sorry. What am I looking for? That's the lookup value. What am I looking for? Next, the lookup array. Where is it located? So what am I looking for and where is that thing that I'm looking for? Where is it? and return array, where is the answer going to be found? So what's the answer, where is that? Okay, couple of optional arguments. We have, if not found, what do you do? So you can specify what happens if you don't find that. Normally you can give a text message or you can perform a calculation, totally up to you. You can choose the kind of match mode that you want to implement, whereas zero means exact match. You have to find that thing minus one or negative one means find the next smallest item. So if you don't find that, find the next smallest item or plus one, find the next largest item. So if you don't find that exact thing, find the next largest item. Search mode, you can also specify one, start at the first item. If you're going from top to bottom, start at the top, work your way down. That's the default. Or negative one, it's a reverse search. So start at the bottom of the range, work your way up. You'll see in my rep sales worksheet how that actually works. So let's put this into practice. Let's have a look at our first example. Here we have a database, for lack of a better word, of 1,000 people. Yep. 
Chopped them all in myself, one by one. Yep, 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 yep. yep. I, I know, I, I'm lying. I want to be able to type in an ID of someone, someone's ID number, okay, according to the numbers on the left-hand side, and I would like to automatically return their email address, okay? So let's do that. We're going to use XLOOKUP to do this. So let us begin. So in my email box there, I go equals XLOOKUP, and here you can see here are all the arguments that I need. So the first thing is, what am I looking up? Well, the first thing I'm looking up is whatever I've typed in there as an ID. That's what I'm looking up. Good. Next, the lookup value. So where is ID? Where is ID? Because I'm looking for ID. Well, here's ID. It's over there. All right. So I'm going to select all of that. Now, you're probably wondering, how did he select all of that so quickly? Control, Shift, and the Down button. Okay. Quick keyboard shortcut there. So that's my lookup array. Now, the return array. Where is the answer? In other words, where are the email addresses? I've looked up the ID. I told you where the IDs are. So now I'm looking for the email addresses. And here they are here. My email addresses, control shift down, select all of the emails there. I'll just come back to the top so we can carry on. Right. Technically, you could stop right there. I mean, you could, there, you could finish that and it would work. All right. But what if, there is something missing. What if something is wrong? How are you going to know? So what we do is, let's look at our optional arguments. If not found. So if we don't find that ID, what do you want to happen? Well, I'm going to write the words not found like that. Not found. I'm also going to choose a match mode. Do I want an exact match? Like do I want that exact ID? Or do I want to find the next closest one? So if I type 9, and there is no 9, it's going to show me 10. I want the exact match. I want to know that there is an ID number 9. I want to know who that person is. Okay, so it's an exact match, 0. The last one is how to sort. I'm going to tell you to ignore that one now and leave it out. All right, so I'm not going to put that argument there. It goes from top to bottom, and that's what we want for now. So let's see if this is going to work. Press Enter not found. Why is it not found? Well, there's nothing entered in in ID. So let's try. I'm going to do number one so you can see your number one is there. Number one, I press enter and it then sh shows me the email address for ID number one. Let's try number three. That is absolutely perfect. Let's try a number that doesn't exist. So if I try 1002, for example, and I press enter, not found. That is how unique and powerful XLOOKUP really is. And it's so easy. I'm going to do another one for you. And I'm going to do it over here. So again, I want to type in someone's email address. Okay. And after I've typed in the email address, I want it to show me what their IP address is. According to my list. So here we go. Equals XLOOKUP. Right. The lookup value. What am I looking up? I'm looking up. An IP address because that's what I'm going to type in. So I type in an IP address. Okay. And I hope I said that earlier. I think I said email and IP. I meant IP and email. You know what I mean? Then the lookup array. In other words, where is IP address located in this bigger list? And it's here. It's in my last column. So let's go ahead and select all of that. Okay. Cool. Whoops. Sorry. Come back there. There's my lookup array done. The return array, right? So where are the emails that I want to now show? Because that's what I want to show is the emails. Here they are here. So let's select all of the emails. Fantastic. What do I do if I type in something and it does not exist in this list? What do I do now? So that's my if not found argument. Well, let's just type in the words again, not found. I mean, that kind of makes sense. Yes, right. And do I want an exact match? I do. I want an exact match. I don't want anything to guess and give me the nearest one. Okay, let's have a look and see if it works. So at the moment it says not found, and that is true because there is no IP address. Let's take this first person again so we can check that it works. So that is their IP address. I'm going to copy that and paste it in there. And there is their email address. Let's do the second one and see. Copy that paste it in there and there 
is the email address. It's working absolutely perfectly. Have a look there. Okay, that is the basics of how XLOOKUP works. As long as you follow, if I just bring it up for you guys, as long, I'm going to bring it up there, as you follow this path here, what are you looking up? Where will you find that thing that you're looking up? Where will you find the answer to what you're looking up? What do you do if you can't find it? And do you want an exact match or an approximate match, yes or no? Okay, that's what I want you guys to look at. This is a fantastic function to work with. I'll make this available for you and you can then practice and I'll give you some more exercises. As soon as this video is done, I'll create some more exercises for you to practice your XLOOKUP.